Ok. Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prasthaya Bhutale Srimati Bhakti Vedanta Swami Niti Namini Namaste Sarasati Deve Guruvani Pucharine Nedvisesa Sunyavadi Paskatya Desatarine Jaya Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Vaita Gidadhar Sri Vasudhi Guru Bhaktivinda Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai, Gold Premanandi, Hare Bo, Hare Bo. Okay, today we're going to continue. Reviewing some homeworks, and let me see who I received homework from. I received homework from Prabhulika, Dasi, and Shritan, and Krishna Raheja. Very good. Hey, Paul. So. I think we'll begin with Krishna. Let's see what he says. He says, uh, explain the difference between karma and Krishna karma. Okay. And Krishna writes, karma, definition from, definition. As we all know, Newton's third law of motion states that for every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. On a universal scale, this is the law of karma. The law of karma basically states that every action has a reaction and whatever you do to others will later return to you. We are still accountable for everything we do regardless of whether we understand it or not. So now Krishna summarizes, he says, to summarize, we can either have a good reaction or a bad reaction, depending on the action. But no matter what, everything in the material world has an action and reaction. Krishna karma. Krishna karma is a type of karma where you do service for Krishna, except the result of the work does not go to you, it goes to Krishna. You do service for Krishna in the sense that the fruit of the result goes to Krishna. You don't expect anything from it or want a result from it either. So in normal karma, whether you do, whatever you do has a reaction, good or bad. But Krishna karma is always good because you are serving Krishna without expecting anything from it. And it brings you closer to Krishna by doing it. Then you go away from the material karma and get uplifted from the modes of material nature, and it's good. Okay. Well, actually, Krishna karma has no material reaction. It's only spiritual benefit. Because uh, sincerely engaging in devotional service without any personal motive other than to please Krishna is free of the influence of the modes of material nature. It's only when we want something in return for the service that we do that we become entangled by at the, at the, mo at the most, well, we become entangled by the mode of goodness and because the mode of goodness is never pure in the material world, uh, it's, it's uh, mixed with passion and ignorance. So therefore we, yeah, we're not simply influenced by pure goodness, and therefore there we get entangled in the laws of karma, even by pious activity, as long as we do not have complete dedication to Krishna. Okay, then second point was find examples of personalities who are free from association with, material, with materialistic people, but still engage in philosophical speculation. 
or find examples of personalities who are free from philosophical speculation but still have association with materialistic people who are addicted to fruit of activities. So, Krishna writes, an example of someone who is free from philosophical speculation but still has association with materialistic people addicted to fruit of activities. If I interpreted this question correctly, if I, uh, if I interpre interpreted this question correctly, it would be devotees. They are free from any philosophical speculation, but associate with non-devotees for the purpose of preaching to serve Krishna. Okay. We can accept that example. And then next, explain what anukulyasya sankalpa pratikulyasya varjana means. So from the purport of Bhagavad Gita 1155, Krishna writes, one should think of Krishna and act for Krishna favorably, not unfavorably. Okay. And then question four, find examples of people who are anukulyena sank, uh, uh or always thinking favorably about Lord Sri Krishna. And examples of people who are pratikulyena, always thinking unfavorably about Lord Krishna. Krishna's answer. Devotees think favorably to, uh, about Krishna. They see everything in relation to Krishna and how everything can be used in his service. Devotees can turn even the most materialistic thing into something for Krishna's service. They are anukulyena. People who are pratikulyena are atheists and the mayavadis that think they have nothing to do with Krishna. Okay, Krishna, thank you. That's pretty good. Thank you very much. So next we'll go to Sritan. And he says, Explain the difference between karma and karma and Krishna karma. Find examples of personalities who are free from association with materialistic people but still engage in philosophical speculation or find examples of personalities who are free from philosophical speculation but still have association with materialistic people who are addicted to fruit of activities. Okay, that's question two. Question three, explain what anakulya sesankalpa pratikulyana varjanam means. And he says in parentheses, in the purport of Bhagavad Gita 1155, mm. Mm -hmm. let's see. So, uh, wait a minute, number two, f yeah. But still engage in philosophical speculation. Or find examples of personalities who are free from philosophical speculation, but still have association with materialistic people who are addicted to fruit of activities. And number three, explain what anukulya sankalpa pratikulyena kulyena varjana means. And then four, find examples of people who are anukulyena, always thinking favorably, to Lord Krishna, examples of people who are pratikulyena, always thinking unfavorably about Krishna. Okay, so question one, he uses Bhagavad Gita 11.55 as a reference, and he says, karma means reactions that are given by actions performed in previous lives. This karma is the cause of repeated birth and death, so therefore it is impossible to escape the clutches of maya and go back home, back to Godhead. Krishna karma, however, means to offer the result of one's, of, the work, of one's work to Krishna rather than becoming attached to it, as said by Prabhupada in the Purport 1155, quote, no work should be done by any man except in relationship to Krishna. This is called Krishna karma. One may engage in various activities, but one should not be attached to the result of his work. His results should be done only for him or Krishna. In, the, it, in these two sentences, 
the definition of Krishna consciousness explained by dovetailing all our activities in Krishna's service. The difference between these two is that karma is what binds us to this material world and Krishna karma is the way to leave this material world. Very good. Very good. And then uh, question two. I am choosing the second option for this question, an example of a person who is free from philosophical speculation but associated with mater materialistic people is Duryodhana. Duryodhana was raised as a prince in the Kuru dynasty and was taught by Dronacharya and Balarama, although having great teachers. He's still associated with people such as Sakuni and Karna. These two people would always encourage him to torment the Pandavas and continue his dastardly actions. Being a prince in the Kuru dynasty, he should have associate, he should have association with great souls such as Bhisma and Vidura. But discarding both, he was driven by greed and with the help of his uncle Sakuni, he performed a dharmic action. This was the cause of his death. Very good example. Sridhan. Question three. The verse Anukulya Sisankalpa Pratikuyana Varjanam is the first line of the verse which features the six divisions of surrender from Bhakti Hari Vilasa. The first line means to accept things favorable to devotional service and reject things unfavorable to Krishna consciousness. In verse 1155, Prabhupada also offers more elaboration by adding in the statement, one should think of Krishna and act for Krishna favorably. We can judge from this that this line means to think of Krishna and cultivate Krishna consciousness by rejecting unfavorable things such as bad association and accept favorable things like prasadam. Good. Okay. And then question four, an example of a person who always thinks favorably toward Krishna is Narada. Narada is a muni who travels from place to place and sings the glories of the Lord. He is always thinking of what glories to say about Krishna and how to help him bring people's spirituality to an to a, uh, to an off um, how to help bring spiritual people's spirituality to an affluence okay um, I don't think you're using that word affluence right there but I understand what you mean to help people bring to help people come to spirituality even his curses are helpful as he cursed Nalakuvar and Manigriva who ended up seeing Krishna. So Narada's curse to Nalakuvera Manigriva was actually a blessing. An example of how he helped a person become a great devotee is the story of Valmiki Muni. Valmiki was once a hunter who couldn't even say the name of God. Lord Na uh, La uh, Narada, due to his compassion, urged Ratnakar Valmiki to speak the glories of Rama, Lord Rama and Valmiki placed a, uh, to speak the glories of Rama and Valmiki and he ended up writing the Ramayana. This is the power of the pure devotee Narada. An example of someone who is Pratikulya and is Kamsa, Kamsa being driven by a death curse, wanted to kill Krishna, the prophesied cause of his death, the, uh, the prophesied cause of his future death. He always thought of Krishna and always, and, and, and ways to kill him so the prophecy wouldn't be fulfilled. This type of Krishna consciousness is not favorable and said to be, um, you, you wrote here Prabhupada, no. It was said to be by Prabhupada in a purport of verse 1155. It's actually called Pratikulyena. It's Anukulyena and Pratikulyena. Due to this antagonistic antagonism toward Krishna, Kamsa had to be killed. The type of Krishna consciousness that's been beneficial toward us is Anukulyena. Seeing Narada as an example, we should try to remember Krishna and dovetail all our activities in the service of Krishna. Your almost your servant, uh, Anand. 
Oh, he says, other examples uh, of Anukul Yena is Prabhupada himself, always thinking of how to serve Krishna. And Prahlad Maharaj, always preaching and singing the glories of Krishna, no matter what he risks. And Yasoda Mata and Nanda Maharaj, always thinking of Krishna and how to make him happy. And examples of Pratikul Yena, Sisupala, always thinking of blaspheming the, uh, Krishna. Hiranyakashipu always thinking of how to avenge his brother's death and kill Vishnu. And Jar Jarasandha always thinking of meeting Krishna and avenging the death of Kamsa. Haribo, of course, Prabhupada. Very good homework, Sritan. Thank you. And now Prabhulika. And she says, explain the difference between karma and karma and Krishna karma. The difference between karma and Krishna karma is that karma is an ordinary activity and has acti reactions which can be good or bad. The reactions from karma determine whether you will enjoy or suffer in the material world. Even if one performs good karma, there will still be a reaction, and you may enjoy that in this life and the next. Our karma is the cause that binds us with the material world. This material world is designed in a way that no matter if you perform good karma or bad karma, one still has to go through suffering. Or dukalayam asasvatam. Krishna karma is an activity that does not have, does not have a reaction or a material reaction. Devotional service performed to Lord Krishna is Krishna karma and this is called a karma, meaning uh, without a material reaction. In Bhagavad Gita 4.16 it says that only action performed in Krishna consciousness can deliver a person from the entanglement of material existence and this is the ultimate goal. By practicing devotional service one can be free from the clutches of material existence. In verse 4.17 it talks about how one should distinguish actions, reactions, and unauthorized actions. To understand Krishna consciousness, one has to understand the relationship everyone has with the Supreme Lord, and then they can take up Krishna consciousness. And for a person to understand this, association with gurus is necessary, and in this way, they can spiritually grow. In verse 18, the translation is, one who sees inaction in action, and action in inaction, is intelligent among men, and he is in the transcendental position, although engaged in all sorts of activities. The purport says that by taking up the process of Krishna consciousness, one is naturally free from the bonds of karma and does not enjoy or suffer the effects of his or her work. So uh, let's comment about that verse. Uh, what is it? 6.11, I think. Okay, one second. One of these action in inaction or inaction in action. So sometimes people have difficulty understanding that, but I'm gonna give you an easy way to understand it. So when it says, when it says, uh, one who sees inaction in action. So that is Arjuna after he became enlightened and he agreed to fight in the battle of Kurukshetra. So although he was fighting in the battle of Kurukshetra and killing people, he was not responsible for the killing because he was doing it only as a service to Krishna. So that is inaction in action. He's, he's acting, but he's not getting any karmic reaction because he's acting only under the order of Krishna, so that is Krishna karma. And then when it says, uh, action in inaction, that is, before Arjuna became enlightened, he refused to fight in the battle of Kurukshetra. So, therefore, that is action in inaction. He's, he's not acting, but by not acting, he's committing a sinful act. Okay, so, uh, when you see action, uh, uh, when you see inaction in action, that's Arjuna when he's enlightened. And when you see action in inaction, 
that is Arjuna before he became enlightened. So that's the way you can remember it. Okay, so next, find examples of personalities who are free from association with materialistic people but still engage in philosophical speculation or find examples of personalities who are free from philosophical speculation but still have association with materialistic people who are addicted to fruitive activities. An example of a person who is free from association with materialistic people but still engages in philosophical speculation is Sankaracharya because he is a Mayavadi. Good, very good, that's true. And then explain what, well, of course he was, uh, he was asked to do that by Lord Narayana, but it is an example of what we're talking about. He's free from philosophical, uh, uh, yeah, so he's an example of a person who is free from association with materialistic people but still engages in philosophical speculation as Sankaracharya because he is a my body. Then explain what Anukuyasya Sankalpa Pratikuyasya Varjana means. The meaning of Anukuya Sankalpa and Pratikuya Navarjana from the Hari Bhakti Vilas 11.676 means that one should always think of and act favorably for Krishna with good men, intention and good mindset. Pratikuya Navarjana means rejecting everything unfavorable to serving Krishna. Find examples of people in the next last time. Find examples of people who are anukulyena, always thinking fairly to Lord Krishna, and examples of people who are pratikulyena, always thinking unfairly to Lord Krishna. An example of a person who was, who was thinking f unfavorably of Krishna was Kamsa. He plotted many ways to kill Krishna, and each attempt was unsuc unsuccessful. He was thinking of Krishna all the time while he was sleeping, eating, etc., except in an unfavorable way. Another example of a person who was thinking unfavorably to Lord Krishna was Sisupala. He would always think of Krishna in an unfavorable way to criticize him. An example of a person who was thinking of Krishna in a favorable way was Pralada. When Hiranyakashipu was attempting to kill Pralada, Pralada was constantly med in meditation on, on Lord Krishna. Another example of Anukulyana is Dhruva Maharaj, he was constantly thinking about Krishna when his mother instructed him to go to the forest and search for him in order to satisfy his material desire, of course. Okay, so those are the three homeworks that I got. Let's see if there's any more that might have come in in the last minute. No, okay. Oh, yeah, we have... Uh, we have Shrestha and Sanmuk right on the last minute. <laughs> so let's look at Sanmuk. Mm. Yeah, you have quite a long explanation. Okay, let me take a look at Shrestha's. Okay, she has a long explanation also. All right, so let's take a look at Shrestha's today. <coughs> so first, explain the difference between karma and Krishna karma. This quote by Srila Prabhupada explains what Krishna karma means. Srila Prabhupada writes in the purport of 1155, Bhagavad Gita, as far as work is con concerned, one should transfer his energy entirely to Krishna consciousness, as stated in the Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu, Anasakta Shavishayan Yatarham Upayon Jitaha Nirbanda Krishna Sambande Yukta Vairagya Muchate. 
No work should be done by any man except in relationship to Krishna. This is called Krishna karma. One may be engaged in various activities, but one should not be attached to the result of his work. The result should be done only for him, Krishna. Krishna karma is the activity of doing all work as a service to the Lord and offering the results of the work to the Lord. Correct. Karma, on the other hand, is the process of working hard in the material world just for one's own sense gratification. The processes of karma leads one to further entanglement in the law of the, in, in the material world. Well, uh, we don't uh, want anyone to be entangled in the material world. That's why we're learning the difference between karma and Krishna karma. Otherwise, people think, oh, well, I'm, I'm only doing good karma. But actually, uh, good karma is also tainted with lust and, and uh, greed and, and ignorance. So there will be reactions because uh, beyond the, uh, all that, uh, one has a personal motive in, in rendering the service in, in just karma. So one should be engaged in Krishna karma, no personal motive, simply wanting to please the Lord. Karma, on the other hand, is a process of working hard in the material world just for one's own sense gratification. The process of karma leads one to be further entangled in the material world. Very good. Many Mayavadis believe that the way to escape the laws of karma is to reject everything and stop all work. There are two main problems with this approach, which is known as falgu varagya. First of all, falsely rejecting everything does not result in detachment. Rather, it results in lingering desires. Interesting. As explained by Srila Prabhupada in a lecture on nectar devotion on January 29, 1973. Okay. Uh, I think I'm reading yesterday's homework. Let me see. What mistake did I make? No, you're actually repeating, and uh, this is today's homework, I'm sorry, but you're repeating some things from yesterday, and that's okay. So Krishna karma is the activity of doing all work as a service to the Lord and offering results of the work to the Lord. And then... Uh, Many my bodies believe that the way to escape the laws of karma is to reject everything and stop all work. There are two main problems with this approach, which is known as falgovaragya. First of all, falsely rejecting everything does not result in detachment. Rather, it results in lingering desires. Okay, very good. As explained by Srila Prabhupada about the, which we read yesterday, the Gaya city and Falgu river, although the river has a dry riverbed, which is only sandy, but if you push your hand within the sand, you will find water. And similarly, Falgovairagya means the so-called sannyasis. They have taken the dress of renounced order, but within the heart, they have got all desires to fulfill within the heart. If you push your hand within his heart, you'll find he has got all desires of material enjoyment. That is called falgu vairagya. On the surface, there's no water, just sand, but within, oh, there is flow of water going on. Falsely renouncing the material activities does not stop desires because as long as we are in the material world, it is necessary to act. Therefore, for those who have stopped all work, desires will still remain. Therefore, the renunciation is also incomplete. This is explained by Sri Srila Prabhupada in the purport Bhagavad Gita 263. Those who are without knowledge of Krishna consciousness artificially try to avoid material objects and as a result, although they desire liberation from material bondage, they do not attain to the purified stage of renunciation. They do not, their so-called renunciation is called falgu or less important. Additionally, rejecting everything and being inactive does not cause one to be free from the influence of karma. 
as explained by Srila Prabhupada in the purport of Bhagavad Gita 419, this, this freedom from the bondage of actions is possible only in Krishna consciousness when one is doing everything for Krishna. A Krishna conscious person acts out of pure love for the Supreme Personality of Godhead, and therefore he has no attraction for the results of his action. Very good. Second fault is that the Mayavadis, or those who follow Falagu Vairagya, do not accept service to the Supreme Lord. They believe that any kind of action within the material world causes entanglement. Unfortunately, the Mayavadis don't understand that the activities within the material world can be purified by dovetailing those activities to the Supreme Lord, who is the cause of all causes and who is all spiritual. If one understands that Krishna is the proprietor of everything, and if they dovetail their desires to satisfy Sri Krishna, then immediately their, desire, their desires will become purified and there's no chance of falling down. Srila Prabhupada explains this in his lecture on Bhagavad Gita 426 on April 15, 1974. But when actually, as it is recommended, sabdadim injan anya indriyag yesu juvati, that indriyag yesu means the indriya of Krishna. When we satisfy the indriya, the senses of Krishna, then automatically our indriyas or senses become satisfied by engagement. In this way, our senses are satisfied by serving Krishna and therefore our desires are satisfied. On the other hand, the Mayavadis, having forcefully rejected everything, cannot be satisfied due to the material desires still burning within the heart. Srila Prabhupada perfectly explains the difference between those who follow Krishna karma and those who reject everything. He writes in the purport of Bhagavad Gita 263, Whereas an impersonalist tries to avoid good eatables, a devotee knows that Krishna is the supreme enjoyer and that he eats all that is offered to him in devotion. So, after offering good eatables to the Lord, the devotee takes the remnants called prasadam. Thus, everything becomes spiritualized and there's no danger of a downfall. The devotee takes prasadam in Krishna consciousness, whereas a non-devotee expects it uh, as material. And the non-devotee rejects it as material. The impersonalist, therefore, cannot enjoy life due to his artificial renunciation and for his reason, and for this reason, a slight agitation of the mind pulls him down again into the pool of material existence. It is said that such a soul, even though rising up to the point of liberation, falls down again due to his not having support in devotional service. Very good. Therefore, the recommended process is to follow Krishna karma. Karma and false renunciation lead to further entanglement in the material world, but practicing Krishna karma means that one is engaged in transcendental activities above the laws of nature. So, uh, the path is either karma, fruit of activities, or Krishna karma, serving the Lord. And it means rejecting all activities. Oh, okay, so no. Uh, so Krishna karma is serving the Lord, and the Maya bodies, so the karmis, they perform karma. The devotees perform Krishna karma. And the Maya bodies reject all activities. No karma. No karma. <coughs> okay, and then uh, types of reaction. V karma is sinful reactions. Karma is pious reactions. A karma is free from reactions. And okay, and then the nature of the action, doing all activities to please oneself, that's the karma yogi. Doing all activities to please Krishna, that's the Krishna karma yogi. And inactivity, rejecting all action, that is the mayavadi. And then the ultimate result, one becomes further entangled, the karma, karma yogi, one becomes further entangled in the cycle of birth and death, 
and travels between the 14 planetary systems. And in the Krishna karma yogi, one escapes the cycle of birth and death and becomes liberated to the supreme abode of the Lord where they or where he remains constantly serving Krishna. And the Mayavadi either merges into the impersonal Brahman or falls down due to the desires left in the heart. Okay, very good. Interesting. So now, find examples of personalities who are free from association with materialistic people but still engaged in philosophical speculation or find examples of personalities who are free from philosophical speculation but still have association with materialistic people who are addicted to fruitive activities. Okay, Shrestha says she was not able to finish this homework. Okay. And then three, explain what Anukulyasya Sankalpa Pratikulyena Varjana means. She didn't have time to finish that. And lastly, find examples of people who are Anukulyena, always thinking favorably to Lord Krishna, and examples of people who are Pratikulyena, always thinking unfavorably about Lord Krishna. So here she writes in the Nectar of Devotion, Srila Prabhupada talks about Anukulyena versus Pratikulyena and gives a few examples of personalities who exemplify these two words. Srila Prabhupada writes in the introduction, devotional service means to prosecute Krishna consciousness activities that are favorable to the transcendental pleasure of the Supreme Lord, Krishna. And any activities that are not favorable to the transcendental favor of the Lord cannot be accepted as devotional service. For example, great demons like Ravana, Kamsa, and Hanyakashipu were always thinking of Krishna, but they were thinking of him as their enemy. This sort of thinking cannot be accepted as bhakti or Krishna consciousness. Prabhupada explains how always thinking about Krishna is not enough. We have to be thinking about him favorably. Favorably, serving Krishna or performing devotional service is the best process by which one can attain success. This is explained by Srila Prabhupada in the purport of Bhagavad Gita 1155. Now here is the verse which clearly explains the process by which one cannot attain, one can attain success in his spiritual activity, devotional service. Very good. Of course, personalities such as Kamsa attained salvation because he was killed by the Supreme Personality of Godhead, but a devotee does not desire such salvation. This is explained in the purport of Bhagavad Gita 1155. The pure devotee does not even want salvation. He does not want to be transferred even to the highest planet, Goloka Vrindavana. His only objective is to serve Krishna wherever he may be. Very good. To better understand the differences between the devotees of the Lord and those who are constantly thinking about Krishna unfavorably, I have compiled a table with different examples of people who exemplify Anukulyena and Pratikulyena. So Anukulyena, Srimati Radharani, okay, and Pratikulyena, Kamsa, and Raputana, and Sisupala, so forth. Okay, very good. Shrestha, thank you very much. And Sanmuk, um, I'm not going to read yours now because it's getting a little late. I have to stop by 10.30. But uh, you did a very exhaustive and uh, detailed homework. Thank you very much. Okay. So, so today we're going to change our subject a little bit and read something from the Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto 1, Chapter 14, Text 34. I don't think we've read this before. And if we did, excuse me, but we'll go over it again. I, I, I don't remember, but we might have, because we've done so many things in the past. So this is Canto 1, Chapter 14, Text 34. 1, 14, 34. 1, 14, 34 in the Srimad Bhagavatam. And it says, Yudhisthira Maharaj is speaking, Is Lord Krishna, the Supreme Person I got it, who gives pleasure to the cows, the senses, and the brahmanas, who is very affectionate toward the devotees, 
enjoying the pious assembly at Dwarkapuri, surrounded by friends. So the background to this rain, to this uh, verse is that uh, Krishna decided to end his pastimes, and Arjuna went to Dwarka to find out what Krishna's next plan would be. But then he didn't come back for seven months to Hastinapur. And then some inauspicious signs became apparent. And then Yudhisthira became very worried because he conjectured, he guessed, that these signs were due to Krishna leaving the world. And so some of those signs were internal bodily states that he could feel. And some of those were outside exterior exterior conditions of uh, material nature. Both ways he could understand something very inauspicious had happened. So when Arjuna does come back after seven months, uh, Yudhisthira is questioning him. He says, is Lord Krishna the Supreme Personality of God who gives pleasure to the cows, the senses, and the brahmanas, who is very affectionate toward his devotees, enjoying the pious assembly at Dwarka Puri, surrounded by friends. So in the purport, Prabhupada says, here is this particular verse, the Lord, here in this particular verse, the Lord is described as Bhagavan, Govinda, Brahmanya, and Bhaktavatsala. He is Bhagavan Swayam, or the original Supreme Personality of Godhead full with all opulences, all power, all knowledge, all beauty, all fame, and all renunciation. So your first homework for next week is to elaborate more on these six opulences, which are all power, all knowledge, all beauty, all fame, all renunciation. And, and all riches, yeah. So all opulences are all riches, one. All power, all knowledge, all beauty, all fame, and all renunciation. So no one. So y y give a little explanation. Expand what it means by opulence, power, and give specific examples about Krishna that fulfills these six uh, uh Transcendental opulences, riches, power, knowledge, beauty, fame, and renunciation. And then Prabhupada continues, no one is equal to or greater than him. He is Govinda because he's, he's the pleasure of the cows and the senses. Notice it says, he is the pleasure of the cows and the senses. Those who have purified their senses by devotional service to the Lord can render unto him real service and thereby derive transcendental pleasure out of such purified senses. So when the senses are contaminated, we don't really take any pleasure in focusing on Krishna. We take pleasure in focusing on television or video games or on the stock market or so forth and so many other things, but not... Uh, necessarily focusing on Krishna. <clears throat> so it says, those who have purified the senses by devotional service to the Lord can render unto him real service and thereby derive transcendental pleasure out of such purified senses. Only the impure conditioned living entity cannot derive any pleasure from the senses, but being illusioned by false pleasures of the senses, he becomes servant of the senses. Therefore, we need his protection for our own interest. So explain in the second homework, explain what Prabhupada means by own interest <clears throat> and why you need protection for our own interest. And then continuing, the Lord is the protector of cows and the Brahminical culture. A direct protection of the Lord, just as the prisoners in the jails are not under the protection of the king, but under the protection of a severe agent of the king. Uh, 
Okay, let's read that again. The Lord is the protector of cows and the Brahminical culture. A society devoid of cow protection and Brahminical culture is not under the protection, uh, is not under the direct protection of the Lord. Just as the prisoners in the jails are not under the protection of the king, but under the protection of a severe agent of the king. Well, that means the, the warden of the jail. Without cow, cow protection and cultivation of the Brahminical qualities in human society, at least for a section of the members of society, no human civilization can prosper at any length. Okay, so uh, the second homework, or the third homework is, <clears throat> why does Prabhupada say a society devoid of cow protection that's what we're living in now. Our society is devoid of cow protection, meaning the greater society, uh, although we have a farm and we protect our cows, but the greater society kills the cows to eat them, so it's devoid of cow protection. And Brahminical culture is not under the direct protection of the Lord, just as the prisoners in the jails are not under the protection of the king, but under the protection of a severe servant of the king. So explain what he means there. Without cow protection and cultivation of the Brahminical qualities in human society, at least for a section of the members of society, no human civilization can prosper at any length. So in other words, Without cow protection and protection of brahmanas, society will always be troubled. By Brahminical culture, the development of the dormant qualities of goodness, namely truthfulness, equanimity, sense control, forbearance, simplicity, general knowledge, transcendental knowledge, and firm faith in the Vedic wisdom, one can become a brahmana and thus see the Lord as he is. So here, there are a bunch of good words. Some of them you know, some of them you may not know. So write down the words you don't know, like uh, probably forbearance and uh, mm, equanimity, etc. Forbearance, simplicity, Transcendent, great general knowledge, transcendental knowledge. So, so g explain what those words mean in the context of uh, the Bhag Srimad Bhagavatam and Bhagavad Gita. And after surpass surpassing the Brahminical perfection, one has to become a devotee of the Lord so that his loving affection in the form of, of proprietor, master, friend, son, and lover can be transcendentally achieved. Okay, so this is an important sentence. I want you to analyze that sentence. In other words, after surpassing the Brahminical perfection, so you have to explain what the Brahminical perfection is. There are verses like 18, chapter 18, verse 54 and 55. That explains in Bhagavad Gita Brahminical perfection. And it says, after surpassing the Brahminical perfection, one has to become a devotee of the Lord. So explain the difference between Brahminical perfection and being a devotee of the Lord. <clears throat> and then, the stage of a devotee which attracts the transcendental affection of the Lord does not develop unless one has developed the qualities of a brahmana as above mentioned. So the brahminical stage is first, and then after that one can be promoted to the devotee stage. The Lord is inclined to a brahmana of quality and not of false prestige. So what does that mean? What's the difference between a brahmana of quality and not of false prestige. So these are all your homeworks for next week. Those who are less than a brahmana by qualification cannot establish any relation with the Lord. 
just as fire cannot be kindled from the raw earth unless there is wood, although there is a relation between wood and the earth. So that's a, a, a simile. And uh, explain that simile. It's very, very, very what we call astute and uh, profound simile. Since the Lord is all perfect in himself, there could not be any question of his welfare. And Maharaj Yudhisthira refrained from asking this question. He simply inquired about his residential palace, Dwarkapuri, where pious men assemble. Dolores stays only where pious men assemble and takes pleasure in their glorifying the supreme truth. Maharaj Yudhisthira was anxious to know about the pious men and their pious acts in the city of Dwarka. Yeah, so uh, last homework is to understand or explain why uh, Yudhisthira did not inquire about how is the Lord? However, he asked, uh, how is the palatial, or how is the palace uh, population? In other words, the people that were the pious men that associated with the Lord in Dwarka, how are they? <clears throat> so, you see, all these are subtle points and it requires uh, thinking about them so that you can understand what is being said. Otherwise, you'll read it very quickly and miss all the subtlety and, and uh, let's say, profound uh, understandings that are in these verses and in this, in this purport. Okay, so now that's your homework for next week. One fourteen thirty four, and you have these different names in the beginning: Bhagavan, Govinda, Brahmanya, and Bhaktavatsala, and Bhagavan Swayam. So you can also explain those words. They're all prof uh, important words describing Krishna. Okay, any questions? There's another thing is, is in this purport. Prabhupada explains what is Krishna consciousness in this purport. Krishna consciousness is depending on the protection of Krishna. And in Krishna consciousness, there's protection of cows and Brahminical culture. And there's prosperity. That means everyone is living simply and happily, happily, simple living, high thinking. Also, because of Brahminical culture, people develop their dormant qualities of goodness, truthfulness, equanimity, sense control, forbearance, simplicity, general knowledge, transcendental knowledge, and firm faith through the Vedic wisdom and in Krishna consciousness, because of the development of all these brahminical qualities, one begins to see Krishna as, as the Supreme Personality of Godhead. But that's not all. Then one has to surpass the brahminical perfection and come to the level of a devotee of the Lord so that So that one can understand the 
begin to understand the depth of love that Krishna has for his devotee. And then the fact that one become, comes up to that higher stage of devotee, then one is able to attract the transcendental affection of the Lord. So therefore, that's why qualities of Brahmana, Brahmana are important. And then going further, becoming a genuine devotee. And so the first level of qualification is to become a Brahmana. Otherwise, it's not possible to establish any kind of relationship with the Lord. And then it's to progress to becoming a genuine devotee in order to reciprocate with the Lord. And one is to develop a relationship and understand. And then the next is to actually reciprocate loving devotional uh, emotions with the Lord. Okay, so there's a lot of lot going on in this purport, and I want you to carefully read it. Exp and it is an explanation of Krishna consciousness, and it uh, and there's a lot of uh, research you can do to, to uh, in the nectar of devotion and in Bhagavad Gita to explain what Prabhupada is explaining ex exactly in this purport. So thank you very much. No questions? All glories to Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. Thank you. Hare Krishna.